Welcome back to Switch to Linux. We're going to try and do a couple more things like little news breaks throughout, uh, particularly if I find something uh, quite fascinating. Don't want to wait off until Friday to talk about uh, some things that you might find in the news. And there are a few different articles that, uh, that came up, so we're going to focus on one of them right now. Uh, and that comes from the XDA forums, which of course is the place to work on custom ROMs and you know other things for customized Android devices. So and as far as phones are concerned, I've had Androids, iPhones, Blackberries, and Windows phones. I've had all of them. Um, I actually like the Windows phones the best, except for, you know, that whole they're completely unstable part. You know, they constantly crash. That was the biggest problem. I thought Windows phone had the best uh, best layout and organization. I uh, loved the live tiles, how they worked. Um, of course, the Windows data collection and spying would uh, certainly push me away from it these days. Of course, I had that back in the, you know, before the Windows 10 days. Um, now, BlackBerry, I had Blackberries when they first made their, I think they only ran like one or two models of phones, I actually had a BlackBerry smartphone, and it was the most atrocious piece of garbage as I've ever seen in my life. In fact, it somehow managed to nuke all of my contacts even out of the carrier's cloud. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And of course, that was okay with me because I don't use any of those cloud services anymore, so uh, I manage all my contacts myself, and it's much better. Um, iOS for me is kind of out now because they've, uh, you know, Apple's Apple's always been an excessively expensive crowd, um, but for a long time they were also really good, and that's actually what made me move towards, you know, iPads, like is what I'm on here, um, and iOS devices in general. Is I wanted to get a tablet, and I end up finding a cheap iPad. This is back in the iPad 2 era, and I was so impressed with how the iPad ran. That's actually what convinced me to go and use the uh, the iPhone, the the iPhone instead of the Android phone. Uh, because at that time, uh, you know, that was, you know, way back long time ago, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago, when iPhone was, it was absolutely better than Android. It was just oftentimes out of the price of your average consumer, and not all carriers had it. Um, but when my carrier got the iPhone, and I looked around, I think I got an iPhone 4 was the first one I got, and it was fabulous, and I never had an issue with, you know, holding it, whatever else, <laughs> uh, mostly because the case I had actually seemed to solve that problem. I didn't know that problem existed, um, but that leads me to now, uh, because iOS is off the table, it's, it's too hard to, to jailbreak them, um, and they're just having way more issues. I do not care at all what the direction Apple is going with iOS. And so I'm just kind of down to Android and custom ROMs, uh, mostly because I don't want the Google services either. So this brings us to the article uh, first reported from the XDA forums is that Google now blocks G apps. So G apps is the, the abbreviation you'll find for Google apps, which includes the Play Store and then includes everything that Google apps has. So your Google Docs, your analytics, your, uh, your Play Store, your Drive, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now Google blocks G apps on uncertified devices. It does let custom ROM users whitelist, okay? But Google has to have your IME number, uh, IME EI numbers, um, so that individual number for your phone. So I thought this was an interesting little article. So we're going to look at it. Um, so of course Android itself is is based on Linux and it is an open source platform. All right, so that means that we know it's in there, we know it's in the code, we know how to audit it, all this kind of stuff. And uh, with that, we know when we get custom ROMs, we can remove a lot of the Google attachments to the point to where, you know, it's not really reporting anything back to Google on the most part. In fact, you could probably even say that almost entirely, it's not going to be reporting back to Google. Now, your carriers, of course, can still track your location, whether location services are turned on or turned off because of of how cell towers work and triangulate. Um, and, you know, some people have said, you know, that reports back to Google as well. And, you know, only if you're running a stock Android system. Of course, if you're running a stock Samsung phone, you know, it'll report back to whoever they want you to. That's the danger of using a proprietary, particularly smartphone. Now, why I'm not a huge, huge fan of just jumping onto the Librem 5 phone is I don't necessarily care that my phone completely runs Linux. I care that my phone is, is reasonably secure. And uh, part of that for me is 
just don't use a lot of apps. In fact, I use very few things. If I have working email and I have working internet and I can share my internet connection with, with my devices when I'm out and about, that to me is good. That's what I want. Um, so in regards to what this article is, so Android is open source, but that gives a lot of people the ability to grab the code, customize it, modify it. Uh, you know, a, a small hardware manufacturer could take the Android device and flash on, you know, a, a, some form of Android. Now, here is the difference is that when you are making a custom ROM, so for example, my phone that I'm actually, I can't show you because I'm using it to record this video. Uh, my phone is running Lineage OS and Lineage OS is one of these custom ROMs. Lineage uh, has removed all of those connections to Google, including the Google apps. Now, when you find and follow steps to flash a custom ROM onto your phone, for whatever reason, I don't know why people do this, uh, and, and, and I guess there's reasons, but there's always that step to how to install your G apps. Well, for about the last year, Google has been doing A-B testing. If you're not familiar with that, it's a marketing concept. And A-B testing basically means that, that you're going to randomize uh, people using your system. And half of the people-ish, whatever their breakdown is, you know, maybe it's an ab, you know, <laughs> a lot more A's than B's, whatever. Uh, some instances, it's a 50-50. Sometimes they do an ABC testing. And what the objective is here is to push certain features to some users, but not to others. It's just a means of testing. So I first encountered A-B testing as a young web developer, you know, about a decade ago when we were doing some tests with this group out of Florida, and they wanted to see what was the best, what was the sweetest price for their online sales. And so what we would do is, you know, everybody, you know, we, we did, a, I think we did ABC testing where people were landed on a page where the service was, 9.95 and then some people landed on the page it was 14.95 and the other people landed on the page it was 19.95 and then our objective was to determine how many people landed on which of these pages and what was the sweet spot you know if we didn't want to just push out the product for 9.95 if people were certainly willing to pay 14.95 but we didn't want to say we didn't want to push it at 19.95 if that was a bigger barrier for people and so we did this ab testing to determine what is the best price and this happens all the time in the industry. Um, this is why if you are curious about if something's, you know, if something is using it, use multiple different devices, multiple different IP addresses, and go to the same website and see if you get different deals. And you know, it's a way you can you can trick into A B testing by doing things like that. Um, and so they basically did A B testing and what was happening is certain people using custom ROMs would be greeted by a screen that says this device is not certified by Google. And so what it was is um, the for users who purchase the device, the device manufacturer has preloaded Google apps and services without certification from Google. Contact the manufacturer and ask for a certified device. So basically, and they lead you to a website. Unlicensed manufacturers, you need a license from Google to do distribute Google apps and services. So for people who are sending out the information and then there's the licensed manufacturer to use Google apps, uh, um, during development, register the device, contact your Google business development manager for more info. So if you are a developer or the last option, and this is the one that, that isn't a huge deal. And that's that to use Google apps with a customized ROM, register the device. So there's a link there to register. Now, so let's talk about what's going on here. It's not all tinfoil hat conspiracy, but a little bit possibly. And so first and foremost, Android itself is open source, but the Google apps are not. Uh, of course, the Google apps include the Play Store, which allows you to install all those other things. But if you're looking at a custom ROM, you're either looking at a custom ROM because you don't like the look of your stock or you really want to get away from the, the privacy issues at Google. If you get, want to get away from the privacy issues at Google, this probably doesn't affect you because you're probably not installing G apps. I have a general policy on my Lineage OS phone, zero gets connected to Google. It doesn't matter if I'm just logging into a web browser on the phone, I won't even do that. 
okay? Uh, I won't even access a Google account via a web browser that is completely not a Google browser at all. I don't put any Google products on the phone at all. Um, nothing that is a closed source Google application goes on the phone. Those people who want to use a custom ROM and still need some type of Play Store, um, the best one I know of is F-Droid. Now, you can download your your uh, apps from F-Droid and sideload all the apps. It's kind of a pain with updating because you'd have to go in there and, and re-update all of your apps all the time. Um, which is fine. You can actually install the F-Droid store, which will manage your updates for you. And so this probably, if you're doing, if you're, if you're trying to use your Google services, um, uh, if you're trying to use your Google services uh, or, or your, your Android phone without using Google services, I should say, you probably don't care about this. Where this gets a little bit tinfoil hatty for me is... Uh, and I understand it, by the way, is that why does Google need access to all this information? Well, the reality is if you're connecting your phone to Google anyway, they have it. They just want to make sure it's it's certified software. Now, the danger is, is Google going to mess with the rest of the core of Android and block devices altogether from any type of service just because of that? That's the direction people might start to say that could go too far, and it's possible, but I don't think it's likely. And the reason is, it's open source. Android is open source, you can cut those things out. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, but regardless, what, what the point is, if you are experimenting with custom ROMs, it seems as though the cutoff time is that everyone got pushed into this screen as of ROMs um, compiled after March 16th. Okay, ROMs compiled after March 16th of this year. Um, and so anybody utilizing a ROM that was compiled after March 16th of this year, who tries to install G apps? That's what it boils down to. This isn't, they're going to lock down your phone. If you don't register your phone with Google, that's not what they're saying here. All right. All they're saying is that if you want to use G apps, then you have to, uh, then you have to register the phone. Um, and so... Let's see. Yeah, so what you need to do then is you will get a, a pop-up screen. You click on the button there. It's going to take you to a page. And then what they want to do is they want to grab your Android ID, which is your IME, I, uh, IMEI number. Enter that into the page. And then if you are a developer, that's the only person this is going to hit worse because each Google account, or if you experiment with a lot of things of your lifetime, each Google uh uh, each Google account that you have can only have up to 50 devices on it at any given time. So that's kind of the, the lowdown. You might hear something in the news about this. I personally don't think it's a huge deal. For me, I'm running Lineage to get away from stock Google. So I'm actually not all that bothered by this in the slightest. Um, for me, I would just, if I wanted a Play Store, and I actually don't, but if I wanted some type of store, I would just use F-Droid. And there's a few other ones out there. If you uh, do this regularly and you know of some other ones, please leave the comments down in the descriptions below for, or in the comments down below for anybody that's following this, uh, watching this video afterwards. Uh, flip down through the comments there and see if there's other ones as well. I mean, I know of F-Droid and I can download all my apps uh, manually and sideload them and that's kind of what I like to do anyway. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of how how to do that. Uh, with that being said, um, that is uh, that is what's up with this uh, with this Google locking out Android phones. It's not that bad, uh, particularly for those of us that uh, that don't want to stay away from Google anyway. <laughs> not bad at all. Um, but for those of you who are experimenting with custom ROMs, you might see the need to do that. And uh, you know, honestly. If you're going to be attaching Google apps to your phone and logging into your Google account, they know who you are anyway. All they want to do is just to make sure that it is a customized thing. Now, during the initial testing, what could have potentially caused controversy and what was you know, potentially going to be the issue is if custom ROM users would be affected. And it does appear that they have fixed the issue for custom ROM users. So that's kind of what I want to say on this brief, uh, brief news uh, clip here. Um, not that bad, but just be aware it's out there, particularly if you are looking at customizing and compiling your own ROM for your phone. So thanks for watching this episode of the news. You can help support this channel at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. I will have some PayPal links over there. There's some Amazon 
Amazon links there and in the description down below. Uh, you can pick up things like coffee cups, water bottles, or travel mugs at shop.switchtolinux.com. That's going to redirect you to uh, Spreadshirt, where you can find all the different things that I have, uh, have for sale in there. Uh, and of course, you can check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.